Now we will talk about paging. Now on paging, we will just divide the address space of a process into equal pieces. And each piece we call it page. And each page will get mapped to a frame in physical memory. So the page and the frame, you can think of them as the same thing, but when we talk logical memory or virtual memory later, later on we'll, you know, we'll talk about virtual memory. When we talk logical, we talk about the page. So this is the addresses, logical address space, and physically we call it, you know, the, the physical the piece of memory is called the frame. physical piece of memory is called the frame. So pages are mapped into frames. So if a process consists of, a, of 10 pages, we need 10 frames. So the page and the frame will have the same size. And if a process needs 10 pages, we need 10 frames of physical memory to fit uh, that process. OK? So, uh, so that's, that's what paging is. Uh, normally, page sizes are powers of two. Well, I think uh, I've never seen uh, you know, page sizes that are not power of two. So the page size is a power of two, and this would probably explain why. Uh, so because uh, a page-based address will consist of a page number and a page offset. Uh, so in this example, assuming that uh, the page size is 1K, which is uh, 1K or 2 power 10, 2 power 10. So we need, if the page size is 1K or 2 power 10, we need, we need 10 bits in order to represent a page offset. Okay, so the offset is gonna be 10 bits. And then the rest of the bits that we have for a page-based address can be used for the page number. So in this case, the offset will be 10 bits, and the remaining uh, 22 bits will be the page number. Okay. Uh, so now with, with segmentation, we needed a segment table. With paging, we need uh, a page table. And the page table will just take a, an address that consists of a page number and a displacement, or an offset. And the page table is indexed by the page number. So the page number is the index within the page table. And the entry will have the, the corresponding frame number. By the way, we'll see some actual examples in a little bit. So there will be a frame number for each page. And adding the frame number to the displacement or to the offset will give us the physical address. Now, do you notice something about the page table that uh, makes it different than the segmentation table? So there is something that we had in the segment table that we don't need in the page table. What was that, if you remember? Limit? What's that? The limit. Yeah, the limit. Yeah, exactly. So in the, in the segment table, we had a limit with each entry. So each entry. Uh, had a limit, a base and a limit. While with paging, we don't need a limit because same. Yeah, because they all have the same sizes. Yeah, all pages by definition have the same size, so we don't need to keep it in every page. So if, it, if the page size is 4K, that's a constant. We don't have to keep it in the page table entry. Uh, okay, so now we have a couple of good examples that will show us how we map pages into frames. So this is logical memory. Logical memory means this is the logical address space of a process. It consists of four pages, 0, 1, 2, 3. And we are trying to map this into physical memory that has, in this example, eight frames in it. And the page table will just do the translation. 
from page number to frame number. So it's gonna it's gonna have a frame number for each page number. So it's gonna say, okay, for page zero, it's in frame one. So frame one has page zero in it. Page one is in frame four. So frame four has page one in it. Page two is in frame three, so frame three has page two in it. Okay. So here, physical memory, we have frames. Logical memory, we have pages. And a frame and a page will be of the same size. Uh, it's just the physical thing, we call it frame. The logical thing, we call it page. OK, questions? Okay, another example to clarify this further. So, we have this example where now each page has a, consists of four bytes, and a page consists of four bytes. So we have the logical address space of this process consists of four pages. Each page consists of four bytes. And in the page table, we have four entries. The page table for this process will have four entries. Each entry will have the corresponding frame number. So it's saying page zero is in frame five. And where is frame five? Frame five is, has an address of five times four, which is 20, because we have uh, each frame is four bytes. So frame five is gonna be at address 20 in physical memory, and that's where uh, page zero will physically be. Uh, page one will be in frame six, and frame six is, uh, uh, frame six is at address 24. Okay? Too much, too much email. Um, okay, so this is what, you know, this is the mapping of uh, logical page numbers into uh, physical frames, okay? Uh, any questions on this mapping? So what's interesting about paging is that, you know, logically, the address space of the process will look contiguous to the programmer, while physically in memory, it may be scattered all over memory, right? So if, uh, if you have a big array, in your program, array of a big size that exceeds the page size, uh, you will just, you will always think of this array as one contiguous piece of memory and you will have your for loop that goes through less than, uh, you know, this size 5 and i plus plus, and you will say a of i plus equals nine. So this array looks to you, logically, from pro programming point of view, in your program, it will, looks, it will look like a contiguous piece of memory. But in fact, you know, this is uh, 100,000. If, uh, uh, if your page size is 1K, then this will be many, many pages, and th this may be scattered all over memory. But logically, it looks to you like one piece, even though physically it will be, it may be scattered all over memory. Now, uh, with, with the description, with our description of pages so far, what kind of fragmentation does paging eliminate, and what kind of paging it doesn't eliminate? So we, uh, sorry, what kind of fragmentation? So we, we talked about two kinds of fragmentation, external and internal. Which kind of fragmentation gets eliminated completely when we use paging? External. Yeah, yeah external, why? Yeah, that's, that's true, but why? Because the frame size is a predetermined constant already. Okay, so the frame size is constant. Size smaller to fit inside of that uh, inside different uh, 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 open spaces. Okay, so the the page size must be selected carefully. Yes, uh, it has to be it has to do with the total size of memory that is available. Yeah. The locations are 
the frames in memory don't have to be contiguous. Okay, but how the, so give me a clear argument so, why this totally eliminates external fragmentation. You will never have such a thing. Blocks of uh, memory that aren't used are always going to be the same size um, as the blocks of your page. Yeah, so it's, you will never have a useless block of memory. So every free block of memory will have at least the, the size of one page. So free, everything will be divided into pages. So every free block of memory will have a size that is an integer multiple of a page size. So you, any block of memory, so if this is used and this is free, so this free, you know, cannot be a page and a half or a page and a quarter. It will be uh, an, uh, an integer multiple of pages. So it would be, for example, three pages. So free space will be uh, will have an uh, an, uh, an, a, an integral number of multiples of pages. So they will always be useful. So you will never have useless space or space that cannot be utilized because the free space will have will be at least one page and even one page can be useful because that one page can be used by some process so the smallest thing that you will have your level of granularity is going to be a page and the page will always be useful you will never have a useless page or a, a page that you cannot utilize yeah. Yeah, but there is the possibility that um, a process requires more than one page, right? So, in that case, do you just assign it the one page that's currently available, or do you have to wait till? Oh, okay. Oh, that, that okay. So, if, if a process requests, so it's if a process requests say two pages, and I only have one page free. This is not fragmentation. This is lack of memory. I just don't have enough memory for it. So see, fragmentation is not the lack of memory. Fragmentation is you have the memory, but it's fragmented. So that's what we call fragmentation. Fragmentation is when you have enough memory, but it's not in one piece, or it's not, it's fragmented so you cannot use it. But when a process is requesting, or a process needs more than what you have available, that's just not having enough memory. It's not fragmentation. Okay? So, there is no external fragmentation with paging, but there is internal fragmentation. Why? Because even though a process has a page, it's not, there's a chance that it's not using yeah. all the space the page has to offer. Yeah, exactly. So, a process may not use the Four page, and this here is an example. So this is a numerical example. So if you have, if your page size is half k, five twelve bytes, and the process needs uh, two thousand sixty bytes, so two thousand sixty is two thousand forty eight plus twelve, so two thousand. 60 equals 2048 plus 12. So the 2048, that's four pages. With these numbers. So this process will have this. Uh, so page one, two, three, four. And this is going to be uh, <coughs> 2048. And then I will need a fifth page for the remaining 12 bytes, so I, I must use a, a whole page, right? With paging, you don't use fractions of a page, so you use a whole page, and this whole page, the process will be using 12, and then the rest of the page, which is what? What's this size here? It's 512 minus 12, so that's 500. So this page, 12 bytes are used by the process and 500 bytes are not used. So this is internal fragmentation. Yeah. 
this is internal fragmentation. Okay. So with uh, with paging, I can have internal fragmentation. Now, given this description, how do you think you can uh, reduce internal fragmentation? You make the size requirement for an individual space smaller. So the size requirement so for each, what? Each, in this case, each page size is 512 bytes. Mm -hmm. But if we reduced it and made it, let's say, 200 and something, then it's less likely that leftover sizes in the page yeah. results. So simply, in it. you make the pages smaller, right? So if you make the pages smaller, you will have less internal fragmentation. Because the maximum amount of fragmentation that you can have is what? If the page size is X, what's the maximum amount of internal fragmentation that you can have? X minus, X minus one. X minus one, yeah, exactly. So if it's 512, the maximum internal fragmentation is gonna be 511, right? If you make the pages smaller, you will get less internal fragmentation, but there is a, there is a cost for doing this. So what are the bad consequences from memory utilization point of view of making pages smaller? You have an increasing um, page table size? Yeah, exactly. So when you make the pages smaller, then processes will have more pages. So you, each process will need more pages, and page tables are going to be bigger because each page now is smaller, so you will need a larger number of pages for each process. So your page table is going to be bigger, and as we will see later, the page table itself will be stored in memory. So a bigger page table will be using more space in memory. So by doing this, you will not necessarily have uh, you know, better utilization of memory. So you're gaining something by reducing internal fragmentation, but you are losing something by having to uh, accommodate larger page tables. Yeah. Okay. Now, and page sizes, and if you are wondering what the page sizes are, here they're talking about 4K to 8K, and I think in, in your systems have larger pages, and the page sizes are just growing as, as memory itself grows. So as we use more memory, the page size, uh, we need bigger pages. Uh, okay. How much can we address with this? So the addressing question, if we have a four byte page table entry, a four byte page table entry or a 32 bit page table entry can address up to uh, three, two power 32 page frames, okay? And if each frame or if each page is uh, four kilobytes, then that four kilobytes is two power 12. This means that if the page table entry is 32 bits, then you can address up to uh, two power 32 multiplied by two power 12, that's two power 44, and that's 16 terabytes of memory. So that's what, uh, just to give you an idea about how much you can address. And the actual size will be smaller because in a page table entry, there are other information that we need to keep, such as the valid invalid bit that we'll talk about uh, when we get to virtual memory, for example. So there's other information that we need to keep in, in the page table.